Good day, this is Jim Pytel from Columbia Gorge Community College Renewable Energy Technology Program. This is EET 121, Digital One. Today, we're gonna to finish up this section with a quick discussion on complex programmable logic devices and troubleshooting. So by now, you guys should be pretty well versed in troubleshooting going through some of the uh, some of the labs here, uh, just figuring out missed wiring or uh, improperly wired chips here. Uh, I wanted to go through a couple of the uh, the troubleshooting, uh, the common faults in the book there. Uh, basically, you have an open output and driving gate, an output shorted to ground, an output shorted to the uh, the high, you know, the the basically the supply, uh, an input shorted to ground. Um, and how you do this, and you've seen this in lab before already, is using your timing diagrams. And the key point in the whole thing. And this is what I was hammering you guys in 111 and 112, 113, is you must know what you're looking for. So there's no sense in troubleshooting a circuit if you don't know how it works. So um, what I suggest is just get a conceptual idea of what you should normally expect. Okay, so what we did previously in the last chapter, excuse me, last section was um, the uh, combinational logic with timing waveforms, and this is what we thought here. This is uh, this is what um, these nested NAND gates here. This is what we would produce. Okay, but now check this out. This is where you start your troubleshooting ability comes in. Let's say Y four here is accidentally shorted to ground. So Y four is always going to come out. Let's uh, go ahead and change Y4. And it's going to look like that. Y4 is always low. So according to our NAND table right here, um, it's going to change X. So Y3 is coming in, and it's a big, long one pulse, and it's a 0, 1, 0, 1. But now check this out. If Y3 is NANDed with Y4, it doesn't really matter what Y3 is doing, X is always going to be a 1. And it's going to look like that. Basically, it's a it's a non-responsive, you know, it's just sitting there at 1 at all, all the time. So you should immediately suspect, if you're checking right here at X, if X is always coming out 1, you're like, hey, wait a second, there's maybe no signal activity on Y3 or Y4. Um, so you would check, you know, put your little logic probe right here and you would see that yellow light flash and you're like okay that's there's something coming in there but then you put your logic probe right here and it just stays steady red something's wrong okay so that's uh it's just a quick discussion of troubleshooting and you know it's just gonna the end result is gonna be the same as the truth table you know just uh as we discussed in our um the timing diagrams for combinational logics there so if y4 is always a zero x is always going to be a one so you got to go ahead and make those changes and find where in the where in the circuit is your problem okay um and you can do this with other things too like say y4 was always to you know if it was always stuck at plus five yeah what would happen there I'll leave that to you. Okay, let's do a super quick discussion on a complex programmable logic device. If we remember our earlier discussion, our simple programmable logic device was the PAL or the GAL. Well, what a complex programmable logic device is just a bunch of PALs and GALs hooked together. And they have a tendency to look conceptually like this, where we've got a bunch of logic array, uh, logic array blocks interfacing with a programmable interconnect array, PIA, program, two M's, interconnect, array. P I A. And now, if you think uh, what we were talking about earlier, simple programmable logic devices, a PAL and a GAL, well, think of each logical array block as a bunch of 
pals and gals inside. And those are referred to as macro cells. And each individual macro cell has um, these uh, basically these product term expander inputs and outputs where you can send um, you know like the answer from one macro cell as an input to the next one. So if you remember our fan and gas circuit from the uh, lab six there, you know fan and gas control, let's say the fan um, for some reason, uh, whether it turned on or off, it also influenced the gas. So you would have a pal or a gal inside that macro cell um, with a uh, with the output for the fan, and it could feed back into the next macro cell for the gas. Okay. The other thing that the complex programmable logic device has, um, it uh, has registered logic, which is basically you can save data uh, for whenever you need it. If there's something going on at a time and it makes reference to the basically a clock, we're going to go into some of these things. Um, the last thing is um, common, uh, excuse me, complex programmable logic devices, it's still some of products. That seems to be the, uh, you know, just the, the way it's done. It's ands with ors, but if we've been paying attention to this section here, you could do just nested nands, okay, where it would be nand, uh, negative or, NAND, negative or, so on and so forth. Okay, so this concludes this section, and we're going to talk about adders, I believe, next.